Heather, I love you, baby. I love you, honey. Come on, girls, one. Hey. Come on, girls, one. What's the plan with this, guys? When you have a headache, you take this. When you have an upset stomach, you take that. When you're tired, you take this. They seem clean and safe. They come by way of an authority that we generally trust. Kids are socialized into taking these drugs. They see everybody take them, from their parents, their grandparents, their baby sister. When you take a drug, something gets fixed. It's in every magazine, it's on television every single day. They're there, they're in all our houses. How can they possibly hurt you? Everybody takes them. And that is the fallacy with kids taking prescription drugs. When used properly, prescription drugs are a perfectly legal and helpful way to treat illnesses and injuries. That's because a doctor orders a prescription drug based on a patient's needs and medical history to treat a particular illness or condition. But many prescription drugs are powerful substances that can have other effects on the body, many of which can be dangerous. There's been an increase or an explosion of uh, new synthetic drugs. The synthetic drugs are still very new. We're still learning about it uh, literally every day. The newer drugs that I see kids doing, uh, between 14 and 18, we're, look we're looking at some fake pot, synthetic marijuana, K2 spice space, things of that nature. What you see with the emerging drugs is, is that they're just throwing everything into the pot uh, without any regulation whatsoever. And we have no idea what they are, how they affect the body, how they affect the body long term, um, or even, even short term for that matter, they're so new. When I first started smoking, oh yeah, yeah, it was a, a great feeling, I loved it. It makes chemical changes in the brain, it physically changes the brain. My attention span was real bad. I was just basically out of it. We found that long-term marijuana users did show IQ decline, but the effect was concentrated among those who began using marijuana as adolescents, which suggests that there's something very specific about the adolescent brain and how marijuana is affecting it. I am addicted to marijuana. Addiction is definitely a brain disease. The first time is absolutely irresistible absolutely irresistible. You know, you take that first hit and um, you're not in control whatsoever. You might think you are, you might think you got it under control, but you're not. I overdosed seven times over the course of five years. If I kept doing heroin, I'd probably be dead right now. Um, I would have overdosed or I would have committed suicide. You're playing with life and death when you pick up the first one. That's all, that's all there is to say. You are, you're playing with your life when you're sticking a needle in your arm. They told me it was gonna be, it's exactly the same exact high as weed. When I first smoked Spice, I was extremely high and extremely sick. I started getting real, uh, real bad anxiety over it. Just a little shaking pain in the upper chest. Sick. I worked to where I had to sit down and 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 just take a rest. I just sat pretty much on a buddy's couch, and I didn't want to move. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I got really quiet. Sometimes you feel like you're gonna die. Ballot measures in three western states ask voters if they want to legalize marijuana. Possession is now legal in Washington state. Recreational pot, anything less than an ounce, no longer illegal in Washington state. As of midnight, Washington state's new law makes it legal for adults to possess up to one ounce of marijuana. According to a recent survey, less than half of people ages 12 to 17 think that pot is harmful. Such views have been influenced by a growing trend to legalize the use of marijuana. Weed is okay. Yeah, marijuana safe. Cigarettes are much more addictive. But how safe is marijuana?
I have had suicidal thoughts. Kids need to understand that they're basically playing Russian roulette with their brain. Very addictive, very quickly addictive. It is extremely dangerous. I just can't imagine that anyone would take these drugs if they just Googled it and found out how many people had killed themselves. You know, there's always something about that phone call that comes in the middle of the night that you know something is wrong. It's like being in a coma almost. It's like you're turning into a vegetable. You can't do anything. You are deteriorating. It's like you're dying. People would approach me in school and just hand me medication that they found in their parents' medicine cabinet. I had no idea what Oxycontin was. I had heard that it got you high, so I asked them if I could buy a couple of them. I was pulling up to multi-million dollar homes and buying Oxycontin. I tried not to consider myself a drug addict when I was using, I was just like, I didn't even like know that term. I didn't understand the word junkie. I just knew I liked to get messed up. I got to the point where I was doing six to eight um, 80 milligram pills of Oxycontin a day. It makes me a different person when I'm on drugs. They really tore my life apart. The use of snuff or chewing tobacco dates back to 1 BC. Today, smokeless tobacco is growing in popularity due to the false belief that it is safer than cigarettes. Today's smokeless spit tobacco contains over 2,000 chemicals. Oral tobacco products contain 28 cancer-causing agents. People who consume eight to 10 dips or chews per day receive the same amount of nicotine as a heavy smoker who smokes 30 to 40 cigarettes a day. 75% of daily users of smokeless tobacco will get leukoplakia oral lesions that appear as white patches on the cheeks, gums, or tongue. For smokeless tobacco users, the risk of cancer to the cheek and gum is nearly 50 times greater than non-users. I was the type of drug addict, I could not go a day, I could not go a second without my drugs. They say you can't be addicted to it, but I, man, I've had some days when it was just like I needed marijuana for me to function. Well, I didn't even think of drugs as addictive. I just thought they were just something you did. I didn't know it was you, my life was going to depend on it. I, I feel very strongly that addiction is a brain disease. I think there's ample evidence, compelling evidence, that there are profound changes that occur in the brains of people who are addicted to certain substances. Acetone, a chemical used in paint thinner, is dangerous if inhaled. It can cause irritation to the skin, eyes, and respiratory system. Pesticides contain toxic chemicals, such as cyanide, that kill insects and other pests. Arsenic used to be a key ingredient in rat poison. Benzene is an additive in gasoline. Its use has been restricted because of its potential harm to humans. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas in automobile exhaust that can be harmful and even fatal if inhaled. Ammonia is the key ingredient in many cleaning fluids. It is irritating to the skin and harmful to the lungs. All these substances can be found in a single commercial product consumed by millions of people, tobacco. He was 16 years old. It was the first day of summer. First time Scotty drinks, let's do it, why not? Nobody thought about the consequences. The truth is that drinking games are really about getting drunk, and that drunk is about people getting hurt. Thinking of it as a game, as a positive activity, when there's all of these negative ramifications or negative consequences, there's such peer pressure. Come on, take another one, take another one, take another one. You know, he did six, why can't you do seven? Or I did 10, you know, can you do 12? Your inhibitions are lower. So you're more likely to do things that you wouldn't normally do. Falls are common, drownings are common. Unintended pregnancy is a big consequence. Sexual assault. By that time, it's gone too far. And either they wind up in the emergency room or, or worse. I just didn't know that kids drank like that. I would have warned him. Are you breathing? And I 
miss him. I wake up in a hospital bed, strapped down on life support with no hair. It all got burnt off. Because women generally have smaller size and smaller blood volume, the amount of alcohol is diluted less. My mother drinking had caused me to have a birth defect. I found out I had fetal alcohol when I was, I was diagnosed at 12 years old. I was out here for about an hour, an hour and a half, and then finally the ambulance came out here to get me. Here, drink some of this. Have a shot. First time you do it, you put yourself at risk because it takes a toll. I drank to experiment and also to relieve stress. There's always a reason to do it. I'm stressed. I don't like my parents. There's, they say don't, so I do it. Yeah, everyone oh, yeah. that goes to public school like does it. It's like, oh well, they're doing it. They, it seems okay for them. They look okay doing it, and they want to do it themselves. I could justify using in order to enjoy myself and other things. I drink every weekend. I don't even drink every weekend, most every weekend. And sometimes I drink on the weekdays. I always said I wouldn't uh, take it to the farthest point, but in the long run I did. Because I couldn't get enough. But I don't think I'll get addicted to, like, or to any type of drug. It went from uh, occasional to daily. And then from daily to not at all. There's a vast array of different ingredients that are in energy drinks, uh, including sugars such as fructose and sucrose, um, uh, different B vitamins. Taurine is an essential amino acid. It's actually the most abundant amino acid in animals and in the human body. Just like any other amino acid, uh, taurine is used to sort of help drive multiple different metabolic processes throughout the body. Amino acids and the vitamins are things that you would get in a well-balanced diet. You don't need any extra in an energy drink in order to be healthy. Many of the products contain herbs. Uh, they're uh, touted for their health benefits, but there's not evidence to suggest there really are any. People believe it, but there's not evidence for that. All things herbal and all things natural are not necessarily good. Um, cocaine or the cocoa plant, tobacco, all these things, the poppy that, that from which heroin is made, all these things are, are natural, not good, however. Just 10 minutes before midnight, Sean had called us and wished us Happy New Year. And then um, it was only 13 minutes later that um, this crash happened. She came to the ER. She basically uh, had not, no skull from the forehead back. Uh, her brains and her skull were actually on the trauma room floor. As he was putting me into the car, my parents had gotten there. So the first thing that they saw was, you know, their son getting pushed into a police car, you know, with the handcuffs behind his back. I ran off the road into a park and hit a concrete bench on the passenger side and a tree on my side. So as a final result, Nicole died. Alcohol is harmless. Fact. Alcohol is a dangerous drug that causes 100,000 deaths in the United States. Myth. You can tell by looking at people if they're drunk or not. Fact. Some people act normal even when they're drunk. Never get in a car with someone who's been drinking alcohol, even if the person seems fine. Myth. It's OK to drink as long as you're at home. Fact. When people drink alcohol, the risk of accidents, violence, fires, and other problems skyrocket. And these problems can happen anywhere, even at home. There are lots of myths about alcohol. But, but we're here, here to give you the, you the totally true facts about alcohol. Ooh, who is that I see? Help! Hang on, Wendy. Uh-oh. Woo, thanks, Uncle Wise. What were you doing? Larry said hanging upside down was cool. 
Just because someone tells you something is cool doesn't mean you should do it. But Larry is my best friend. He's the coolest owl in school. There are lots of ways to be cool, but doing something dangerous isn't one of them. Then how can I be cool? From up here, I see lots of ways. Take a look. Doing things that are good for you is cool. But how do I know if something is good for me? Great question. Let's find out the answer. Hi, I'm your friend. I'm your friend. Let's just say we know each other from school. You can't see me, but I'm right here, hiding behind my screen name. I'm not I'm a not bully. Hungry. I'm just having some fun. Are you scared? I know you're reading this. Are you there? I have access to you all the Everyone time. Everyone thinks you're a loser. Thinks you're a loser. Your Facebook, your email. I can even text your phone. And what's with your hair? Guess what? Everyone thinks you're a loser. Is it true your mom picks out your clothes? Love. Love. Cyber bully. This is a book that I made about a year after she died. I invited all of her friends and we wrote things like what they would have said if they had a chance to say to her. She was known for being smiling and kind and happy. Pretty much that's how she was up until junior high school. Something started to change about her and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. Jeffrey was just a normal kid with a big loving family and wonderful teachers and big plans for the future. At the end of ninth grade, we took a vacation as a family and just had a wonderful time. But after we came back, Jeff seemed almost depressed. Something happens to kids if they're repeatedly tormented, where they kind of begin to feel like they're less socially important. They become more isolated, they become depressed, they become more alone. They really begin to lose any hope that they are part of what other kids have, which is social value. Each night, um, something happened to one or two other kids. You're always told you have to do what they say, when they say it, how they want it. What is this? Two of the kids grabbed me, pulled me in the other room. There was about 40 kids uh, in there just waiting for me. Team exercise. No, what the f is that? I was afraid they would just open my mouth and dump it down my throat, and I would have no choice if I said no. I felt nothing. They were through it. The word hazing doesn't do any justice to what has gone on now. It's more of um, sexual abuse, uh, harassment, assault, um, physical and, and mental. Come on, you want to be on the team, don't you? No, not that bad. People that you're bullying, you kind of forget that they're people. You only see them as a way to get a laugh. Bullying, for me, was making somebody believe that they were lower than dirt. If I said something about somebody, I wanted to see them cry. Never once in that whole week of the name calling did it cross my mind that her feelings were being hurt. Kids get bullied every day. That's just the way it is. Sure, schools have policies. My school has a policy. Yeah, that's worked out real well. I am not a bully, and I'm not a victim or a target or whatever they call kids who get bullied. I know I should probably do something, break it up, but really it's none of my business. I was making fun of people because they weren't as cool as me and they didn't wear the same stuff as I did. And I just went with the peer pressure and I just started being mean and saying these mean things. I remember thinking to myself, Wow, I really reached a new low. 
I don't want to go into the classrooms and see people whispering about me and see people talking about me and hear people laughing. Sometimes people do bully people without even realizing it. Bullies come in all sizes, shapes, and colors. They could be guys or girls. Some bullies know they're bullies, but others don't. Are you a bully and don't even know it? This program will ask you some questions to help you figure that out. Meet Mark. Mark is pretty popular in school. As a matter of fact, some people think he's cool. Some people think he's funny too. This is Chaz. He doesn't think Mark is funny at all. <laughs> nice trip, Chaz. See you next fall. Hey, why'd you do that? Just a spaz. Chaz a spaz. <laughs> Stop it, Mark. Stop it, Mark. Stop what? You pick on me every day. Oh, you fall down and you blame me? I can't help but that you're a spaz. Chaz? Chaz is spaz? That's funny. <laughs> Chaz is spaz. Who? Who? Who is that I see? I'm Wise Owl, and from where I sit, I can see everything going on below me. Let's see what's going on today. Oh my! It seems that a big kid is picking on a smaller boy. And look, there are other kids standing around just watching the boy being bullied. Have you ever seen someone being bullied? Some kids are laughing. Did you ever laugh? Some kids seem scared. Do bullies scare you? What should you do when you see someone else being bullied? Well, that's something I can help you figure out. I always say, don't be a bully bystander. 